Hey what's up guys, this is Jack and welcome back to another Android tutorial video. So what we are going to do in this video is that we are going to learn how to hide or show the toolbar as well as the floating action button aka FAB on scroll. This is a very useful technique that has been widely used by most of the successful apps because it simply allows the user to focus on what they should be focusing while they are scrolling through the content. Now let's take a look at the YouTube Android application. Notice that each time when you scroll down, both the toolbar and FAB will be hidden. And when you scroll back up, you see that both the toolbar and FAB will become visible. Don't worry, we are going to learn how we can achieve this result later in this tutorial. Alright, with that being said, let's get started. As usual, the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the Hello World text view as well as the action bar on top. Then we are going to import the Android Design Support Library. Now just in case if you have never heard of this library, it is actually a library that has been introduced by Google to make our life a lot easier when it comes to material design. One of the highlights of this library is a new layout called Coordinator Layout, aka a superpowered frame layout that basically allows you to coordinate the dependencies between child views. Don't worry, I know it may sound confusing at first, but you will get the idea how it works later on. Once you've added the library and synced your project, we need to head over to our layout file and replace the layout with the coordinator layout. Alright, now within the coordinator layout, we are going to need three main tiles which includes a bar layout, view pager, and a floating action button. Then within the app bar layout, we need to create a toolbar and a tab layout. Do take note that I have only added scroll flags for the toolbar and not tab layout because we don't want tab layout to react to any scroll events. After that, we need to import an image which will be used as an icon by the floating action button. Alright, the next thing I'm gonna do is to create a new class that extends fragment so that we can later use it to set up our view pager. But before we do anything else, let's first create a layout file for this class. And for the root element, I'm going to use relative layout instead. Now for the sake of the simplicity of this tutorial, all we need to create for this fragment layout file is a simple nested scroll view that contains an ordinary text view. As you can see here, I've made the text to be slightly larger than usual in text view so that we have something to scroll later on. And because we are going to need a very long text for this text view, it would be better for us to place a text in the string.xml instead. Alright, once you're done with that, we need to head back to the dummy fragment class to overwrite onCreate and onCreateView method. Oh, before that, we need to make sure our class extends fragment. Now, there is actually a shortcut to overwrite methods in Android Studio, and that is to press Ctrl plus O and simply type in the name of the method. And lastly, we need to inflate the fragment layout in the onCreateView method. Yep, that's it. Now it's time to put all the pieces together in the main activity class. Oh, make sure you don't forget to include this line right here. Set support action bar. 
because if you don't, the toolbar that we have created in the man activity layout file will not be shown on the screen. Okay, now in order for the view pager to work, we need to create a static class called adapter that extends fragment pager adapter class within our man activity class. Then by using this adapter, we can then create a function that will basically set up the view pager. Alright, now all that left to do is to call the setup view pager function from the onCreate method and set it to our tab layout. Cool, now let's try to run our app. Okay, everything seems to be perfectly fine except for the floating action button because it should be hidden when we scroll down and it should be visible when we scroll back up. So how can we do that? The first step is to create a new class called scroll FAB behavior that extends floating action button dot behavior. Then we need to override two methods which are on nested scroll and on start nested scroll. So same thing, press Ctrl plus O and type in the method name. Alright, the next thing I'm gonna do is to replace the return statement within the onStart nested scroll method so that it will return true when the scroll event is in vertical direction. If we don't do so, the onNested scroll method will not be triggered. Okay, now whenever the onNested scroll method is called, which basically means the user is scrolling in a vertical manner, we can actually make use of the dyConsume parameter as well as the FAB's visibility state to determine whether we should hide or show the FAB. Oh, and don't forget to create a constructor for this class or else it won't work in an expected manner. Now to create a constructor, simply press alternate insert. Select constructor, and there you go. Last but not least, we need to associate this behavior to the floating action button in the layout file. Alright, now let's try to test it out to see if everything's okay. Sweet! That's it guys, we have successfully hide and show the toolbar as well as floating action button on scroll, just like how YouTube did it. So if you liked the video, please hit on the like button, share it to your friends, and of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And one more thing, I would like to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Peace.